An interview with Mr. A.D. Goodman, October the 7th, 1980. Interviewer, Clary Sweever. You were mentioning about uh, getting your books from Wilkesboro. Now, to get to Wilkesboro, you went by horse and uh, wagon. Uh -huh. Is uh, that where you've done a lot of your shopping to, or special grocery buying, or selling? The heavy grocery buying we did to Wilkesboro. Uh, my first trip to Wilkesboro was made when I was approximately five years old. Uh, Got the wagon, me and my father, Miss Taylor's granddaddy, I, I substituted my granddaddy from my father there to, to make it sound mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. different. But Dad and I uh, went to Wilkesboro in a wagon. We loaded up a bunch of produce. We saved up potatoes and some cabbage and maybe some skins of beef animals and some things like that and maybe a bunch of butter or something, chestnuts of all the year, put up a load of stuff and put in the wagon and hit out to Wilkesboro. We came down Branch to Beaver Creek and down across where Lake Irish is now and on down to the river at the mouth of the creek and across the river bridge, it was a covered bridge at that time, is a unique thing to, to me. And the way that wagon rumbled as it went through that bridge had made a peculiar sound. And granddad told me, my dad told me that there's another one in Wilkesburg. We crossed the top of the Blue Ridge fairly early that morning. And by the time we got down to the foot of the mountain, it was time to take out and eat and feed the horses. And my mother had they cooked a bunch of vegetables, or not vegetables, cakes and pies and stuff that we could carry with us. Had all the sliced ham and eggs and stuff and put it in a box It was made oh, about 12, 14 inches square and sat right in the front of the wagon bed. Every wagon there had this box, they called provision box. And we'd come down and you'd throw your quilts on that you need for bedding. You had the seat for the wagon. We sat on that with our feet dangling down on the double reed. And I remember we got to um, a place called Mitt Gaither's out just about halfway from uh, Miller's Creek to Wilkesboro and camped. And built a fire, a cool fall of the year. And Dad fried some of his meat and uh, got ready to, well, he took it out of his pan and did a thing that I never heard of before. He took some of the biscuits that my mother had baked and put in this provision box, split them open, put them down in this uh, red eye gravy, and toasted them good on both sides, and fried his eggs in the pan quickly. And we had some preserves and things like that, and we ate those hot, he called them toasted biscuits, first time I ever heard of the word toast. And my, how they, mm -hmm. you can imagine how good a good mm -hmm. biscuit with our gravy would be toasted. And when, uh, before we got ready to go to bed, uh, Mr. Gaither came out and wasn't anybody else on the campground that night and said, uh, if you don't smoke, I've got a stable right up here, barn, with a stable in it that's uh, filled up with shucks. You can go right in that stable and make your bed. We went to, over to his stable and he pitched that thing, and the stable was 10 or 12, 14 feet square maybe. He pitched that thing full of corn shucks about three or four feet deep. We went in there and spread our quilts that we had with us down in and around in those shucks. And talk about snow sleeping oh. out there, the animals around us. We hear the horses. Was there a fee? Did he charge you for No, it was perfectly oh. gratis. And uh, we spent the night, got up the next year, they went on into Wilkesboro sometime about middle of the morning. How was the roads then? Were they very narrow? Uh, or? The road, I remember going down the Blue Ridge, actually across the top, turned down just a little winding road. It was just wide enough, barely, for a, a wagon. And so rough, there's some big old rocks sticking out of the middle of the road, and I was scared it was going to 
catch the brake bar. That's the Lewis thing on the mm -hmm. wagon, and the bar that worked the brakes. I kept arguing with Dad. I said, you wouldn't try the brake bar out of that wagon. He said, no, it wouldn't. Our wagon was high as anybody had been over the road. So we don't have that. If he told me this, and I'm not sure whether, now I don't remember whether he asked me to do it or not, that a lot of times they stop their wagons when they come to one of those long, narrow places and send somebody on ahead to stop traffic coming up mm -hmm. so they could pass. And I, I believe, he told me, that's a four, five year old boy, to go on down there and see it. He'd wait till I had time to get old. Oh, Two, three, four hundred yards to where there's a wide place in the road to where they can pass and told me to stop any traffic that's coming until he could get down there. I, I'm pretty sure he did. Anyway, he said that was ha custom. The roads are so narrow and bad. Couldn't pass the wagon. Now I asked him about it and I said, What would you do if you met somebody? He said, Well, it wouldn't be a thing to do when they take the team out of the wagon that's coming up, take the team loose, and let the uh, driver manipulate the brakes and the fellas uh, went by take that wagon tongue and steer it back down the hill to get to a uh, place wide enough to pass maybe a quarter of a mile down the mountain. Did the horses ever break away and run away with anyone? No, I never. I guess they're all well trained. <laughs> and it took you two days to go to well, North we got that We got down there the second day about um, sometime up in the morning. They were down, down there in time to see the train. That was my... That's <laughs> your purpose for going? My, my big purpose for going is to see the train. And we went down and when the train came in sometime that morning and saw it. And that was a show. So, boy, I'd never seen anything. <laughs> Come puffing up the track with a steamer flying. I was ready to run. <laughs> <laughs> And we bought it and sold out what we had and kept that night up on the hill right above the depot. It's now right in the center of town. It's up there across the second street. Right close where I, I think the post office is now. It's just an old room sage field and people had worn it out camping up there. I remember how gullied it looked and just wouldn't have sprig of grass nowhere except around the outer edges where people couldn't get the moon sage. And we built a fire up there and camped that night. And in Wilkesburg. In Wilkesburg. Uh -huh. Did now when you were camping, did were there a did you was this just commonly known as a campground? You it just is. went it's common there was no camp. camp, there's no uh a fee or no, you just, didn't have just, to pay there's no open field and then, well for good to say. Boy, I know it's just perfectly <laughs> welcome. Anybody want to And then that's people it, over it. Um, you bought the the produce and sold what you needed. The produce and bought uh, what you needed. What we needed. Staples, salt, um, that was one of the big staples and um, green coffee and white cloth usually was some of the staples that we mm -hmm. had to lay in it. We couldn't get that closer home maybe, mm -hmm. or we could, but it had been cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. So we bought up um, a winter's supply of things like that. That was a big event oh, to go to North yeah, Wilkesboro. Yeah, I talked about it for all time to come. <laughs> I remember one thing, uh, Dad bought a, a can of corn. Uh, I thought that nothing any better than roast mares, and he bought that can of corn. Uh, I wondered how he was going to get into it and we got ready to eat. He took his pocket knife and cut the lid out of the top of that. Now, was this a can that somebody had canned? Uh, no, the store. It's a store mm -hmm. commercial can stuff. That's what I'd ever seen. And he cut that lid out and I thought so much of that cup is about as big as, uh, well, about, held about a half a pint, I guess, or a pint. I brought that thing home with me, and I remember we I met a uh, uh, boy around here, his name Fields Harless. And I had to tell him about my trip, of course, and showed him my tin cup. And he's had a fit over that thing. He said, I'd like to have that to drink coffee out of. <laughs> <laughs> That's a popular thing, huh? 
Yeah, and I, I kept that thing and, and showed it for. And I, another thing I, I brought back, I I don't know where I, how I got a hold of it, don't remember, but I got a hold of a little square piece of coal, about inch inch and a half square, and I kept that in my marvelly box for years and years. That little little that little piece of coal. The blacksmiths up here use charcoal. They did. Yeah. And that so was, that was something new. I, I showed that to many persons that would see a piece of coal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, when you finished um, your high school, were you determined to teach or did you just want to go to college or? Now you went to Wake Forest to say Yes, went to Wake Forest. No, I had the more idea of teaching than I did applying the moon. And it didn't all the way through school. Now how many years did you teach? Forty. But uh, when I went to this college, Dad wanted me to go. He had a fit for us. All have a good education. He said he didn't have any. And he could read and write and um, count enters and things like that. Your grand my your, dad, uh, uh, granddad, did. granddad taught school oh, really? a year or two before I can remember. But uh, he said his children were going to get an education, and, and I got uh, I didn't finish high school till I was twenty. Borrowed one hundred and thirty-five dollars and hid up in Wake Forest. That boy and money had no idea. I didn't know what what I was going to take, and, and I thought when I got through high school, and I got there, up to the registrar, he said, "Young man, what are you what are you going to take?" I said, "I don't know. I just want to take freshman work." I thought it would be just like it was in high school, just certain things, and that was all we had at high school, you know, just enough to get through. And I thought that's the way it was in college. Didn't know any better I stood in front of the <laughs> registrar. And he said, oh, you got to take the course and this and that and the other. And he happened to be a Greek professor. And he said, oh, young man, you ought to. Nobody's educated unless they have a course in Greek. <laughs> I said, well, put it down. <laughs> and he gave me a course in history and a course in math and Bible. And math and Bible. And Physics. And I think that's what I had. What there. was the uh, What was the last one? Physics. Physics. Uh -huh. Oh my! What a what a curriculum. <laughs> it was a pretty tough one, but I, I stayed there until talking about math and physics till I had every math course that Wake Forest gave and every physics course. You did. I didn't leave a course of math or physics behind. I took them all. Is that right? My math math professor was professor. Jones, one of the finest men I've ever seen in my life, and I just thought more than anybody in that world. And my physics teacher, first year was a fellow by the name of Spees, but my advanced physics teacher was Lake. He's the daddy of I.B. Lake. Oh, really? This I.B. Lake now that's running for governor mm -hmm. is Professor Lake's grandson. His daddy is named I.B. Mm -hmm. I.B. and I were in this. We parts together. This is Professor Lake's son, I.B. at Beverly, and uh, we were just the biggest buddies at all. Um, we were well. I wouldn't. I don't to say it, but the two head students in his class. And I remember we were still freshmen. But he decided, Professor Jones decided one day that he was going to let us help the rest of the class. So he said, now I'm going to arrange a schedule here and you boys can come up here in Goodman and Lake or, or assist you in keeping up your math. So he gave me one day a week, one night a week, to go up to this class room and meet anybody who wanted to come up there and get help and wake another day. And the first night I went up there that, uh, to that thing, I was scared literally to death. Uh, the upper classmen didn't like for freshmen to be too prominent. <laughs> and there was a lot of haze at that time. 
fact of the matter, out of the about a hundred freshmen, thirty of them got their hair cut to cut smooth off during the year. And I went, and this room was on the third floor of the old administration building that burned down years ago. And I went went up there pretty early to that classroom. And after a while, I heard a bunch of boys hit the stairs, and I'd pass several down that knew me down to the stairs, and they started up the stairs singing, "We ride old Newish Goodman on a wheel." And they <laughs> Newish, uh, Newish, oh, for the freshman, yeah. they called it Newish, old Newish Goodman on a wheel. And as they got closer and closer, I, I got scared worse and worse. I shut the door to the classroom and put the chair in it and got me a chair. I had to have it like this. If that door would open, somebody got that chair out of his head. But there's three classrooms up on that floor, and they turned when they got to the floor and went over another classroom to their class. Uh, but I didn't really even be scared there for a few minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, well, when you, how did you get to Lake Forest? Did, oh. <laughs> did you just take off walking? Or? No, hardly. <laughs> I got there about as quick. <laughs> uh, one Sunday afternoon, uh, packed up my suitcase, and uh, one of my brothers and I hitched up a horse as their buggy. We had a buggy. And uh, went across down to Lake Ash to, to cross to 163 down here, uh, where Lake Ash Road meets. Mm -hmm. meets it. And I went on down, we went on down to the to the river, that I had an uncle that lived just after you cross the, where the uh, Bridge Manor sign is. Mm -hmm. He just lived out there in the field. There's some sign out there yet, built the road, we call a Miller, uh, uh, married my mother's sister, Albert Miller, you heard of Albert, yeah. Albert's daddy. And I spent the night with uh, Albert and uh, Bob. Bob is the old man Miller, Bob Miller. The next morning, Albert and I got on his horses, on the horses, and rode down to um, the house, first house this side of the river bridge. It's an old white house out there yet in the field, oh, two or three, four hundred yards from the bridge toward the river. I had another uncle, uh, another well, uncle did live there, but he moved out, but uh, Full of bear, I reckon it was um, Weldon Bear's daddy from a store there, and I had found that he was going to work for that Monday morning with an old bottle tea truck. So Albert and I got down there in time to get my suitcase on that model T. And we on to Wilkesburg and that, and about two o'clock, one thirty or two o'clock, I got on the train at Wilkesburg, and. About six, we were in, running into Greensboro. The train didn't go any further that night, stopped. They got off the train and uh, the old ho Craig Hotel stood just across back of the depot, just go through the depot in that next building uh, was the hotel. And they there and got me a room and spent the night. Got up next morning, got on the train again and went to, to on to Raleigh. And got to Raleigh on, that was Tuesday. Tuesday about 11, and about 1.30, got a train went out to Wake Forest, got out there about 2.30. There was a, a, a long trek, wasn't it? And when I came home at Christmas time, and reversed the thing, came to Newsburg and spent the night, and to Brooksboro on the train the next day, caught the mail truck that was running out of that time, out of Brooksboro at Christmas time. The muddiest time that I've ever seen, I guess. And we pulled through that mud, and before we got to the drill bar, pulled the mountain, it was way after night. And the post office is in a little house that's still standing there. Just when you get to the foot of the mountain, out to the right, as you go down, a little white house out there, and just before you go around the, around the curve across the street and start down where the post office was and the family lived there, I don't know who were now. Uh, they let me spend the night with them. 
sent them out there, and Albert um, Oscar Burgess. His daddy was carrying the mail from Wilbar to Jefferson at that time, and I'd written to Oscar to bring the horse to Wilbar. So he came down there that morning leading a horse. And I got on that horse and came to the Lake Ash, uh, the Lake of Acre sign, where that sign mm -hmm. is. Got off that horse, put my suitcase on my back, and went across the mountain to old home. Got in there uh, about four o'clock mm -hmm. that day. Happy to be home, worn out, I guess. Worn out. Well, that, that's great. Um, and then, of course, you came back to Ash County. Yeah. To, to live after, uh, after you finished what After you finished, I was uh, talking about why, what I went down there to do. I didn't know, had no, no idea what in the world I was going to do. In fact, my dad thought he was going to make a preacher, and everybody in the country did. Of course, I don't know why they ever got in their head. I never given that idea. <laughs> didn't try to. But uh, the pastor of church even got up one time and announced that I was in Lake Forest and said into the ministry. Because he had no <laughs> grounds for that at all. But when I got through, I, I, I went down there to take all the English and all the history that they get. That was my ambition. I had an English teacher here at West Jefferson that I thought used such pretty language. I thought mm -hmm. I wanted to do the same thing. And when I got down there and found out what English was, I shied away from that and run into this math professor and this physics professor and he got just tied up head over heels in math and science and all I wanted from then on was math and science. Math and science. How about the Greek? How did you do with the with the, your Greek? I, I made out pretty well with it. I, I enjoyed it pretty good but uh, they came out of uh, change, well there's change made in the way they schedule classes my, after my first year. Uh, they, every class then was on a yearly basis. You took the class all year long. And this Greek was a, a whole year from September to June. Next year they, they put in the semester.